Romans chapter 14 that we're, we're looking at different convictions and areas of um, just basic Bible belief these, these few weeks, and uh, we're on our, our sixth one. I'm not going to review the first five tonight, but uh, uh, this one is, my activities must never weaken the scriptural convictions of another Christian, uh, considering others. And, you know, in, in the Christian life, there's, there's two basic areas of belief. Um, one is the areas where the Bible speaks directly and specifically. It's a general area. You know, there's, there's just things in the Bible. For instance, in Romans 13, uh, chapter 1, he says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Uh, we're, uh, the Bible teaches that we're to submit to the state, to obey laws, pay our taxes, respect authority, and so on. Uh, that speaks pretty specifically. Uh, later on in, in that uh, chapter, uh, verse 8, for instance, Owe no man anything but to love one another. And then verse 9, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. Um, these are very specific, aren't they? And uh, we don't have to uh, have a degree in theology to understand them. Uh, you know, we're to pay our bills, we're not to commit adultery or kill or steal or, uh, or so on. And the Bible speaks specifically and, and, and directly, and we, we should know what the Bible says and obey it. And when, it when it comes to this area of uh, Christian understanding. But there are other things of, of life where the Bible doesn't speak clearly or, or necessarily directly to it and where we have to apply Bible principles to them. Um, and that's mainly what we're looking at tonight, not, not the only thing, but in Romans chapter 14 and 15, he gives us three basic guidelines that, that we can use uh, to, to have a better understanding of how we, we should live. And how you understand it and how I understand it, we might have a little bit different view on some things. Uh, you know, I might think that every preacher should wear a tie when he preaches. Oh, that's not a conviction with me, but uh, you know what I'm saying. There, there's some things where the Bible doesn't say uh, what we're to do and we apply different, different principles. Let me read Romans 14, starting in verse 1 through verse 5. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He lists some things there that, uh, you know, where the Bible doesn't say, well, it's, uh, you know, it's a sin for you to eat meat, or it's a sin if you only eat herbs, or something like that. And yet there's, there's people who think, have different opinions and, and different uh, ideas on it. And one of the things he says here, if you're, if you're taking notes, we, we're using the word there, conviction. And we're using it in a little bit different way, but uh, conviction. He says that we're to be fully persuaded. Uh, let, him be, let him be fully persuaded in uh, verse 5. Uh, you need to know what you think is the way God is leading you in some of these things where it, it doesn't necessarily spell it out. You need to, to be, the question I put there, am I fully convinced? And that's guided by God's Word. Uh, not led by emotion or lust or, or even just, sometimes we do things because it's the way we've always done it. And that's, that's not the way we decide what's right or wrong. Although I would have to say, sometimes the reason things are, have been done historically is because that's the right thing to do. But anyway. Um, as well, God doesn't want us to be half-hearted people. Now, saying that, there's, there's things, and I, I hate to admit this, but there's things where sometimes I'm just not quite sure what God would have us to do on some, some areas. And uh, when I'm not, not sure, I don't take a dogmatic stand. But uh, God, wants us, God doesn't want us to live a half-hearted life. Uh, in Colossians chapter 3, for instance, he says, Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. 
You know, as you serve the Lord, don't serve Him half-heartedly. Don't serve Him uh, weakly. Uh, and by that I mean W-E-A-K. Um, you know, don't, don't make it a, a poor effort. Uh, be enthusiastic about what you believe and, and what you do. Uh, but understand, we're not going to agree on everything. And uh, we, we don't have to agree on everything, but we do need to receive each other. Uh, there in, in 14 verse 1, Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputation. Uh, you know, it's not to give each other grief uh, over uh, things where the Bible hasn't spoken specifically. Not only do I need to be fully convinced, I need to uh, answer the question, am I doing this as unto the Lord? Uh, it's important that we're doing this not for uh, the applause of man, uh, but for the Lord. Let's, let's look in verse 6 of uh, chapter 14 there. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Interesting that you know, both, both ways, whether you eat or whether you don't eat, you give the Lord thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Now, really what he's talking about here is, is Jesus the Lord in this? Is Jesus the Lord in, in your understanding of what God would have you to do? Some people have used the question, what would Jesus do? Now, if we're perfectly honest, in some things in life, I don't think we know what Jesus would do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be honest with you. But there's other things where we can see, you know, when the Bible speaks specifically, then we, we have a specific understanding. When it speaks generally, then we need to, uh, to take it in that way. The, the key is, in 1 Corinthians 10, he says, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. The culture will affect us, but we need to be careful that that's not how we decide what's right or wrong. Uh, we need to decide whether our culture is right or wrong by Scripture, not, not the other way around. And I think you can put it this way. Convictions look forward. Uh, we're, we're trying to do what we do so that we can do it with enthusiasm and be persuaded that it's what God wants us to do. And I've seen people struggle with things. I remember a man we knew. It was a real struggle for him to decide whether he should buy an investment property or not. Now, he was worried about it from a scriptural point of view. Was that a good use of his money? Was that a godly thing to do? And Boy, he struggled with it. And he had to finally make a decision. When he did it, he said he felt real peace about it and felt no problem. Now, you know, the Bible doesn't say don't have an investment property. But he struggled with it, and he had to come to a conviction on it for himself. Now, the second guideline applies maybe more to the subject we're looking at tonight, in verses 10 through 13, and that's the, the word conscience, conscience. Let me read starting in verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Um, conscience, in a sense, looks back. Uh, we don't want our conduct to be such that we'll look back with a guilty conscience. Uh, we're going to stand before God. Uh, we need to ask the question, will it stand the test of the judgment seat? You know, in, in verse 10, the end of it there, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, we're going to have to give a, an account of ourselves to the Lord. Uh, a well-known passage is 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3 where he, he says, Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. 
If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Uh, we're going to have to give an account of ourselves to, to the Lord. And uh, so we need to consider uh, our, own, our own conscience. Now, there does spring up a problem with this in that uh, we can develop a, a seared conscience. And there's a few other terms that, that the Bible uses where our conscience is not going to work properly and has to be renewed and restored by the Lord. So we've, we've always got to get back to, to Scripture. Uh, we're going to have to give an account. Romans 14, verse 12. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We need to ask, will it stand the test of the judgment seat? But also, am I causing others to stumble? And we've got to consider our conscience in relation to other people as well. We're, uh, we're not alone in the Christian life. We're not supposed to be alone. And I think one of the reasons God does that is so that we have to exercise Christianity. <laughs> you know, we've got to put it in a into practice with real situations, not just theory. Uh, let, let me read, starting again in verse 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there's nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat... Now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Now, it gets kind of difficult here, in, in a sense, but uh, he uses the illustration that would have been probably fairly common in some of the, the cities that, that they were in, where people were, would get saved out of idol worship, and they had meat that was offered to idols. Now, I don't know if you know it, but idols don't actually eat meat, <laughs> and so they had all this meat that they could sell then. Uh, at another place, what's it called, at the rubble, or uh, anyway, they, they use a word for it in one of the other passages, where shambles, that's it. Uh, and um, so it was, it was the cheapest meat going, secondhand meat, <laughs> I, I guess. So for a Christian, they thought, well, yeah, great, cheap meat, you know, the Baptists, we're, we're for a bargain. Um, but when some people had gotten saved out of idol worship, they thought, oh, how, how could they eat that meat that's been offered to an idol? And so there was a possibility of offending someone just in the meat you were buying, you know. Now, I've always found it hard to make mo modern applications to these. I know there are, uh, but he's just saying we need to be thinking about others as well as ourselves. Uh, it would be better to pay top dollar for meat than to offend someone and hurt them in their walk with the Lord. Um, he, he says in verse 13 that we are to, uh, to judge ourselves. Judge this rather. Judge, don't judge one another, but judge this rather, that we don't uh, put a stumbling block. And, and that's the key in life. It's not judging others. That's easy. <laughs> we can do that with impunity, you know. Usually we don't even tell them we've done it. The key is that we judge ourselves. You know, take a, a look at what, what we're doing. And he says the two extremes here, verse 15, he, he talks about destroy not him with thy meat. That means to tear him down. And in verse 19, at the end, he says, uh, wherewith one may edify another. Edify means to build up. And the, when we're looking at our, our conscience on this, we don't want to be tearing Christians down. We want to be building them up. And sometimes that would mean that, and we'll, we'll read a passage on this, uh, as well, that we might limit our liberty to help a brother or sister in, in Christ. I don't know if this is a good illustration or not, but it's actually a true one. Um, you know, sometimes there's things that there's nothing really wrong with them, but they can lead to other things. And I heard of a Sunday school teacher who taught her Sunday school class how to play cards, poker cards. Now, there's nothing wrong with those 
those cards. I'll be honest with you, I grew up in a home where we, I'd never seen poker cards until I was an adult. Uh, in, in our home, we've, we've never, never had them. Um, we just kept away from them. But anyway, they, they learned to play cards. And, and later on, some of those boys got in, in trouble playing cards. Now, you know, like it says, what's the verse there? Uh, nothing is unclean of itself. There's nothing unclean about a card or a game. But that kind of game is often used in a, in a bad way. Now, that's not the best illustration, but uh, just saying we need to be careful uh, what we're doing and how we're, we're going about things. Uh, the Romans' example was eating of meat offered to idols. If you look at verse 20, he says, For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything, whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. We just have to think of others. Uh, am I causing others to stumble? And as well, am I doing this by faith? Verse 22, Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Wow, that's a, that's a strong uh, statement, isn't it? Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Faith, I use this verse probably every week, faith comes from God's Word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And uh, we need to uh, be convinced in our own mind what we're doing. You know, we want to look forward and say, yeah, I'm going to do this for the glory of God. But we also need to, uh, to look back in, in the sense and think, I, I don't want to do this and have, have shame come because of it. I want to consider others. Uh, of course, we never should do what we know is wrong. I mean, that, that just really goes without saying, doesn't it? Uh, it's never right to lie. It's never right to, you know, there's, there's just things where we, God spells it out. Sometimes it's just doubtful. And uh, we need to, to not, not do that until we are able to do it with conviction, to able to do it by faith. Uh, conviction, conscience. The, the third guideline is, is really, we've already looked at it some, consideration, consideration. Uh, look at chapter 15, verse 1. Uh, these are not easy verses, and I, I don't mean to gloss over them or anything, but it's a, it's a deep concept. Uh, but what we're looking at is, is the conviction uh, that my activities must never weaken the scriptural convictions of another Christian. Uh, consideration for others. Chapter 15, verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. There's that word again. It means building up. For even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Uh, we've said convictions look forward, conscience looks back, in, in a sense. Consideration looks at others. Uh, you know, we look around. Uh, there's a lot of things in life like that. You know, you're parking your car. Oh, that guy's trying to get out, I'll just wait. You know, you, you look around. And really what you're thinking about with, with Christians in our fellowship is, will what I do hurt or help? Will what I do hurt or help? Uh, look in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. This was the passage I was thinking of earlier. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 8 and verse 13. He uses this same illustration and he says, Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. I have a note written in there, liberty declined. There's times when we just put aside our liberty. We do that a lot. You know, as husbands, we do that for our wife and children. As wives, you do it for your husband and children and family. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we, we don't take the liberty we have because we, we, we want to invest ourselves in, in someone. In uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 24. Uh, 
1 Corinthians 10, 24, Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, there's that word, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. Now he spells this out pretty specifically here. He, he says if, if somebody has some meat that has been offered to idols, just, just don't ask any questions, just go for it. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All belongs to God. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you eat, asking no question for conscience sake. He's saying, don't ask, was this offered to idols? <laughs> it put down, you just eat it. Uh, we found it's good not to even ask what it is sometimes, but anyway. Uh, verse 28, but if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience sake. And he uses the same phrase, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Uh, the same thing uh, can cause us to eat, the that can cause us not to eat. Uh, we do it for the Lord. The earth is the Lord's. Hey, uh, he, can, he can bless us either way. And we do it uh, in consideration. You know, this is a person who, you know, they, might, they might be doing it on purpose. Oh, we'll, we'll put this before the Christian. Some of you who work in the... In the out in the world, you know, sometimes there's people who put things in front of you. Let's see what this Christian does. And uh, you need to make sure that for their conscience sake, for their consideration that you're doing, that you have the, the high standard uh, that, that God, that, that they would, uh, that would help them. I'm not sure quite how to phrase that. Romans chapter 15, where, where we started, reminds me a lot of Galatians chapter 6. Um, Romans 15, we, verse 1, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, not to please ourselves. Uh, let everyone please his neighbor, and so on. It's very similar to Galatians where he says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Uh, you know, there's just to be consideration uh, for others. We're, we're not in this alone, and we need to have consideration for each other. We're to help each other. So three principles here. Can I look forward anticipating to please Christ? That's important, isn't it? That when we're doing things, we should be able to look forward, man, this, I'm doing this for the Lord. Uh, secondly, will I, will I look back on it without a guilty conscience? We've probably all done things where we think, boy, I wish I hadn't done that. And sometimes it... it Ahead of time, we didn't, we didn't know or we didn't realize. We hadn't put all the thought into it that maybe we could have. And looking back, we think, oh, that, that kind of hurt so-and-so or that, that caused a, a friction. Thirdly, have I been helping or hurting my brother and sister in Christ? Uh, my activities must never weaken the scriptural convictions of another Christian. And uh, I can almost guarantee you, at some point, you'll, you'll hurt someone else. And uh, then the Lord gives you the opportunity to humble yourself and to apologize. <laughs> uh, that's a good experience. Uh, it's something every father should do with their children. Uh, the, the words that uh, kids don't often hear from their parents, I was wrong, will you forgive me? And so important for them to, for them to hear it. If, if you want to be strong, you be the first to apologize. But anyway, that's, that's another subject. We'll pre I'll preach on that another time. Someday we're going to give an account. And you know, God highly values love. Very important part of the, of the Christian life. And in one sense, what we're talking about here, you're going to have to deal with yourself. And you need to use God's Word to make decisions. Sometimes you'll feel uncomfortable about something. Well, you have to decide if that uncomfortable feeling comes from God or from self. Sometimes you'll feel uncomfortable doing what you know is right. You can feel very uncomfortable doing the right thing. Because you know it could have consequences, or you know it'll offend someone, or, or whatever. Uh, be careful that you, you seek to, to glorify the Lord. Uh, we can feel bad because of sin, or we can feel bad because of selfishness. Uh, is yielding going to bring God's peace? Uh, so we, we, we're considering ourselves, but we're also dealing with others. Yeah, in Romans 15, 7, Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. In dealing with others, what he says in that verse is, you need to receive others like Christ received you. Did you see that? Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us. And how did he receive us? 
to the glory of God. Uh, that's a great verse. It's a little gem in there, you know, that you, it's easy to miss. Uh, we need to receive others to the glory of God, just like Christ received us. And uh, that, I think that's a real key. In uh, Romans 15, 4, uh, he talks about the scriptures. And, you know, we come to God by faith. God's word is, is the standard. Now, I, I study it all the time. I've been studying it for years. Uh, and there's still times I think, well, what in the world does that mean? <laughs> you know, but uh, God can help us. And most of the things are pretty simple. And if we'll do the basics, God will help us with, with the rest. Uh, in, in verse 4 there, he talks about these things were written aforetime for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scripture might have hope. God can help us. Uh, we come to God by faith. And in verse 5, Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one uh, toward another, according to Christ Jesus. Uh, we come to God through Christ. Yeah, those two simple, basic things uh, are, are so important to us as Christians. There's a verse in, in John, John 5, 24, where he says basically that same thing. John 5, 24, Jesus is talking. You notice sometimes he says, verily, verily. That means, listen. <laughs> he repeats it, and it means truly, truly. And when he repeats it, it means, listen up. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. That's the same as what he said in Romans 15. Uh, we need to uh, come to God by faith. We need to come to God through Jesus Christ. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So the question is, have you come to God by faith through Jesus Christ? And as we look at this, this kind of a topic tonight, my activities must never weaken the scriptural convictions of another Christian. There may be things that come to your mind uh, where maybe you need to seek the Lord's forgiveness. Or maybe you need to seek someone's forgiveness. And uh, that's a good thing. It's something you wouldn't want to necessarily do hastily or in a, in a wrong manner. Uh, but we need to be right with each other. And if, if there are issues uh, between family or friends or church or so on, um, be, the, be the leader, be the strong one, and, uh, and seek, seek to make those, those things right. We're going to sing a, a song tonight, page 155. It's the song, Have Thine Own Way. And uh, as we sing this, I think that this is a good song for us to end with, uh, that uh, the Lord would have His way in our hearts and lives. Get Azrael to come and, and lead us in those verses.